Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I am doing this with you throughout the entire video so it's like we're doing it together. Make sure to leave a comment. I reply to all comments. The company we're going to look at is Digital Realty Trust and this company digitally connects companies in the same building or the same work center. Let's get started with the model. This is also a REIT structure. Their market cap is 41 spot, $4 billion. It's one of the larger REITs out there. And then we need the stock price. That's 153.77. That's what they're trading at. Let's pull the free cash flow. That's cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And they have pretty healthy, positive, consistent free cash flow. So that's good to see. And it also makes it a lot easier to value a company that has positive and consistent numbers. Now I'm pulling the net income off the income statement. This is the profit and loss for the business. And also the sales for each year. That's also on the income statement. And the sales have increased quite a bit, 2.1 billion to 3.2 billion. It looks like it's a pretty healthy growing company. Let's look at a capital structure. We need the interest they pay in their debt, that's $353 million. Let's see how much debt they have, we'll go to the balance sheet, go to liability section. Current debt of $1 million. Long-term debt of $10 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. REITs don't usually pay interest, so the cost of debt is 3.5%, which is the interest rate they pay in their debt. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a really low beta, 0.26. So that indicates the stock is not too risky, not too volatile. So when you invest, you want to invest in a low-risk investment. If you're looking for risk and volatility, then you play options or go to Vegas. Let's go back to the balance sheet and get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later, and that's $625 million. And current assets is what you use to run your day-to-day -day business. They have $89 million of cash, $305 million in net receivables. Let's see their current liabilities. This is how much money the company owes within the next 12 months. That's 1.2 billion. That's current debt of 1 million, accounts payable of a billion, and 2.7 million of other. Let's get their stockholders equity, and that's almost 10 billion dollars. That's total assets minus total liabilities. They have 1.4 billion in common stock, negative 3 billion in retained earnings because they pay so much out in dividends and negative 90 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement and get their earnings before interest and taxes. That's 627 million. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 51% debt, cost of debt is 3.5%, 49% equity, cost of equity is 4.3%, and the WAC is 3.9% which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows that's up here in blue. We also estimated terminal value which is all cash flows past year for that's 45 billion dollars. We had to discount those numbers back to today's dollars using the weighted average cost of capital that's in green and we get a value of the company of $47 billion. We divide that by 269 million shares. We get an intrinsic stock price of 175. They're trading at 154, so they're trading at a 12% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They're at 169. So they're also saying the company's a buy. It's good to see how much my REIT model has improved the past few months. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So the stock has pretty much been going up consistently over time which is good to see and coronavirus doesn't seem to be affecting this company so it does seem like it's a good value even though the stock price isn't that low the valuation is coming up higher than the stock price let's take a look at the financial ratios they don't have a good PE 
or a good price sales or a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. Earnings per share is net income over shares outstanding. So investors are paying $71 for $1 of net income. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below two and a half, they're at 13. So investors are paying $13 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 4.2. So investors are paying $4 for $1 book value. They have a bad current ratio, a decent interest coverage ratio, and a bad ROA. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they could only cover half of their current liabilities, so they need to take on more debt or bring in more revenue. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see it over 20%, they're at 6%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, they're at 1.8. I like to see two but they're above one so they can cover their interest expense. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on City Office, SL Green, and Vornado. They're all in the same industry as digital realty. And a good ratio to look at for REITs is price of stock over funds from operations per share. Funds from operations equals net income plus depreciation, amortization, minus gains on sale of real estate. And the lower the better. SL Green Realty is in the best in this category. Digital Realty is the worst. So Digital Realty investors are paying $23 from $1 of funds from operations. In terms of PE, Digital Realty is a little better than average. Average is 87, they're at 71. They're worse than the average in price to sales and price to book. Also worse than the average in current ratio. They're the only company under one in current ratio. ROE, they're lower than the average, but most companies are doing pretty poorly, except Vornado is doing really well. In terms of debt, they're at average at 51%. All the companies are around 50%, and they're by far the largest company. So I don't think they go anywhere, even though their numbers don't look so great. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.